All right. Um, our next presenter is Alan Windham from the University of Tennessee. His presentation is Using Social Media for Ornamental Plant Pathology in Entomology Education. Thank you, Ben. This work with uh, using social media is really a team effort. I'm a professor of plant pathology for 100% appointment and extension. Frank Hale is a professor in entomology for 100% uh, extension appointment. Debbie Joins is a director of our Soil Plant and Pest Center. And Daryl Hensley is our pesticide education coordinator. And we all work together on this page. Well, we had tried, and we still do, conventional means of extension education. Uh, we work at a diagnostic lab. We diagnose plant disease problems, identify insects, do soil testing. Uh, and we've used various means of reaching out uh, as part of our educational programs. But one thing that we always learn is that uh, diagnostic skills for a lot of people in the green industry, master gardeners, laymen, uh, they're just not that great. And it's something that you have to continually work on. And the key thing is if you don't diagnose the problem correctly, then you're going, you're going to choose the wrong management strategy. And it can be a waste of time and money and also could lose a crop or a garden or plant or whatever. So we looked at social media as a way to reach people format that was easy to use, easy to access, uh, and use a tool that people are already using. Uh, so we created uh, the page for the Soil Plant Pest Center. And uh, Dr. Hale and I really didn't know much about this when we started. We decided to try it and just uh, to see what would happen. And our goals were to alert the audience of insect pests or plant pathogens that were currently active to warn possibly of new invasive insects or pathogens, uh, to warn of things that are active today. Uh, uh, Frank and I, we, uh, we do so much photography, we've got excellent uh, uh, digital images of insects, insect damage, uh, plant diseases. So really what we want to do is alert, also alert the audience of educational opportunities. Uh, so for instance, on pest alerts, uh, Frank and I were in Memphis last week. We visited the, the epicenter of crepe myrtle bark scale in Tennessee. It's a new exotic pest on crepe myrtle. Uh, and uh, a lot of people don't know about it. They don't know what to look for. Uh, it's spreading in the Memphis area. So this would be uh, an example of a post we would put up. Rose rosette on roses. One thing that we found, if you want to draw some interest, just about put anything up on roses. Big audience there. Uh, we figured that out. So talking about rose rosette, uh, talking about uh, downy mildew of garden patients, which has been a huge problem uh, in the green industry over the past two years and probably will continue to be, or things that we've uh, put post up. So what we do is we've got good illustrations. We may do albums where we show a series of images. Uh, not a lot of text. We know people are not going to read uh, a lot. And uh, for instance, we try to be timely and topical. So for instance, yesterday I had a few minutes, walked across the street here to the Capitol grounds, found the World Peace Rose Garden, and of course I took photos of diseases. And uh, that's what I do, you know, that's what I do. So, and that's common with Frank and I, you know, if you read our, if you read, followed our Facebook page, you might say, well, we were at a fast food restaurant today and we saw the canium scale on uh, willow oak. Uh, that might be something. But what we're trying to do is put up illustrations that help people in the diagnosis of plant disease, insect damage, and also to identify insects. So we try to be timely and topical about things that are happening. Now, of course, uh, it's snowing in Nashville today, so roses don't look like this. But they will uh, in a few weeks. And uh, other than rust, we do see all of these problems uh, in Tennessee. And one thing, when we first started this, we were basically doing it for the Tennessee audience. And what we found is that we have a much larger audience. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And basically, what do we put up? We put up topics, things that people ask us about. And we do it today. We're not talking about things we saw last year, last month, last week. It's things people asked us about today, or maybe, it, it, uh, maybe yesterday. 
so for instance, we'll put up diagnostic tips. How do you distinguish between Cavatina blight of juniper and Phomopsis blight? Because why did I do that? Because I got a question about Cavatina blight and Phomopsis blight is more uh, commonly known, so I just put up a little tip about that recently. Uh, also, when I got into this, I really didn't know that much about analytics, so I was really interested in Sarah's talk, but we're always interested in going back and looking at what were the popular posts, what are people actually engaged in, uh, of course, roses, and Rose Rosette is a hot one right now, but for instance, uh, this uh, was put up February 11th, it was shared 29 times, we couldn't see everybody that shared it because some of those were to private pages, but it was shared to pages in seven states to six county extension offices, to four Master Gardener Association pages, and you know we're just as likely to have uh, it shared to Master Gardener Association pages in New Mexico, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's, a, it's a much larger audience than, than we ever imagined. Uh, of course, all of our images are archived, uh, and, and I heard someone say that putting these in albums would make it easier for people to go back and browse, and that's certainly something we could do. What I have done uh, recently is to, most of my posts are albums that go up, uh, so that's good. For instance, they can, you know, the uh, upper right hand corner, the yellow belly sap sucker, uh, just last week somebody sent damage of that, a picture to me and asked if that was uh, some type of beetle that was damaging a, a maple. And um, so whatever is kind of the hot topic, whatever we get questions about, that's what we put up. Now, what we'd like to see, we'd like to see uh, extension agents sharing this to pages in their counties because they get lots of questions on consumer horticulture, commercial horticulture. Uh, it's a big area of interest. And uh, just like Sarah, we followed the analytics. Uh, I really like to know, I go back monthly and look, and I want to see how many people were engaged what our reach was, although I can tell you I don't really, you know, I have a better idea now after Sarah's talk of what reach is, but really the engaged people that are actually liking or sharing the page or commenting, uh, I'm really interested in our engaged users. And I go back and look, and it's not surprising that, uh, I mean, we found too that probably our least popular post or thing, or links to another story. Uh, what people really like are our original content. They like the photos, they like, um, that it's happening now, that this is something to look for uh, today, uh, that it's timely. Uh, we haven't gotten into videos, but we may do that now. And, and I was also interested in hearing about uh, guest blogs, so that may be something uh, that we will do. And very much like, this almost is like it came from Sarah's talk, but uh, it is interesting. If you went to Dr. Hales in my, some of our winter meetings where we talked to people in the green industry, uh, the audience you would see is about 95% male and about 5% female. Uh, but look at the number of uh, women that follow or have liked our Facebook page. We're reaching an audience that we never reached before uh, as far as gender. Uh, so this is definitely, I think, definitely a plus. So we're very uh, interested in that, very encouraged in that. And also it's very interesting that if you look over from ages, the groups ages 25 to 64, it's pretty evenly distributed uh, across those uh, ranges of age, ages too. We also have over 300 businesses, associations, and government agencies that, that follow our page. Uh, and we get shares to these pages, for instance, Master Gardeners in Davidson County, well that's in Nashville, so I wonder where they've been, but well, that was just recently. Uh, but uh, Mississippi State University Extension Service just followed our page. Uh, we have companies like the Farmers Co-op, uh, different stores will follow, different garden centers, master gardener associations, uh, and then really, you know, the multiplier effect of our information show up on these pages is great because we could reach a larger audience than we ever imagined that we would. Uh, if we looked at the first year, Frank and I were so excited when we got 100 likes, we were like, woohoo, we're doing good, got 100 likes, uh, and then it just, it just continues to grow. Um, first year, you know, as far as engaged users, we had about over 20,000. This past year, we had almost 40,000 engaged users. Uh, so, 
you know, we'll, we'll continue to do and try to refine what we do, try to reach more people. Um, but it's been very interesting. What about, you know, I've heard some references to this at the conference. What about interaction with people that are engaged with the page? Uh, this is something that's kind of scary, really, uh, because we are not trying to replace Ask the Expert. We're not trying to this to be a substitute for our diagnostic lab or the digital diagnosis system that we have for our extension agents. Uh, we do have people that will post images, uh, ask what is this, what can I do about it, and right now it's such a small number that we will answer those, but it's going to be a really short answer and probably just a link to an extension publication. Um, but this is the thing that we didn't really think about that could be a little scary if you had lots of people asking, you know, what it, posting photos, what is this, what is this. Um, at some point we'd probably have to say, you know, there are other avenues for getting this answered and that's not really the main intent of this page. So, the, you know, the challenges are time. <clears throat> uh, luckily, I have a, a Labradoodle that gets me up about 4.30 in the morning, so that's some of my time when I work on the Facebook page and I just think about, you know, what are things that I was contacted about the day before that I can put up. Uh, audience buy-in. Uh, I would like to see a lot more of our extension offices just share our information to their page because I know they're getting asked. I had, a, I had an extension specialist to call me and ask me a question and I said, Tom, I covered that two weeks ago. You need to go, you're not following our page. If you had been following our page, you would know the answer to this question. So uh, we need to, uh, audience buy-in is not always there, but I'll tell you this, in 29 years of working at Extension and doing all the traditional things, I have never done anything that has come close to this, and I don't know how you uh, would, uh, this would reflect in a metric, but I have more people walk up to me at every field day meeting I go to and thank me for doing this and I can tell you that's that hasn't happened like this people really appreciate this um, and like I said the posts and questions generated they're a little bit scary because how much interaction can you have with the audience um, we want to have a little bit and we do ask questions are you seeing this if you're seeing this particular problem we'd like to know about it let us know because we're trying to use the audience as a kind of, you know, some of the master gardeners, especially in extension age, it's just first responders to let us know if they see an invasive pest uh, in their locale. So uh, successes, I think we're reaching people new to UT Extension that didn't know we were there. We're definitely reaching uh, a larger female audience than we have before, so that's great. And the thing is, we do a lot of meetings. We see people in different parts of the state maybe once a year at that meeting in January or February. This allows us for them to follow us the rest of the year and to keep up with what's going. There's actually one guy that works at a garden center in Chattanooga and he was at a meeting in um, February and I said, you know, you follow this every day, you could actually get, get up and give my presentation. Uh, but uh, that's great. And then the multiplier effect where it, we have information that's shared to other pages, other extension pages. Pages, Master Gardener Associations, whatever, uh, that's, that's definitely been a success. So um, it's just with something new that we tried, and um, by the maybe uh, the, the metrics that we set for ourselves at the time, we're, we're very pleased with how it's going, and we'll just try to refine it and, and see what happens. Uh, what questions? Can I take questions now, Ben? We've got a microphone here, so. Um, thank you. That was good stuff. I have a question about, um, I, I'm at Michigan State Extension, and we're constantly looking at um, educators who want to start various program pages for different programming, and we're struggling with if we filter all of that information through one Facebook page so people get a variety of information or if we get real specific with something like what you've done. So I'm just curious um, if you went through that thought process and like I would maybe look at this and say, gosh, should we join that uh, with our Master Gardeners and do that all together? And I'm just curious if you went through that thought process and... Well, the first, 
uh, answer is no, and then the second answer is yes. <laughs> uh, we were one of the first people to, I mean, UT Extension had a page, and uh, I say one of our first goals was to have the, you know, catch them a number of likes, but what we didn't anticipate was, well, now uh, different departments have pages, and the turf grass group has a page, and the turf grass weeds group has a page, so are people in the green industry going to follow all of these pages, or would it make more sense to have maybe one centralized page? And I mean, that's something I have thought of since other pages are popping up. Um, but right now, it really hasn't seemed to hurt our following. The following's growing, but I definitely understand your answer. And you know, possibly like our Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology, we share content to the department's page. Um, but I can see where if every group and subgroup had their own page, it could really fracture the, the audience and following. Question in the back. When you started this, what was your main intent? And, and now, has it changed? I think we were very naive when we started it. I think probably our main goal was to try to stay engaged with those people that we saw once a year at meetings in the Tri-Cities and in Chattanooga and Memphis, to stay more engaged. And, and that has been a goal that we, we definitely have accomplished. Um, and then, you know, we didn't even think about sharing. Uh, you know, another goal would be to get extension agents to share our content onto their page or to have somebody in the office do that uh, because they get so many of the same questions that we get. Um, so those are some of the things that we, we thought about. Howdy. Uh, what about other social media networks like Pinterest? Have you ever thought about branching out into those? Because you have a lot of uh, posts that are visual in nature. Yeah, most of our posts are. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, I would say, especially during the growing season, 90, 95% of our posts are visual with excellent photos. And uh, Sarah just told me after her talk, that we need to be on Pinterest. So we'll look at it and see. I mean, I only recently, you know, got a Twitter account. I try to stay away from Twitter, but um, we'll definitely look at that because if it is basically for a visual medium, then it might be a good fit. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much.